everyone. In today's video, we're going to be checking out Musk de Sables, or I can't pronounce it. <laughs> but we're going to be reviewing that. And I bought the sample set from uh, Les in Dimmadabla oh, last month, I guess. Or maybe the month before, I'm not sure. I've had them a little while. Um, but yeah, recently I've been wearing Musk des Sables. Sables, Sables. In the notes listed, there's mandarin, there's oris, there's patchouli, and there's ambergris. I don't get massive amounts of mandarin, I'll be honest. I think you get a little pinch of a juiciness in the top notes. There's something just a little bit juicy without smelling massively orangey or mandarin-like. Um, it's subtle, you get a little bit of a kind of a sweetness going in that direction without like orange in your face. So a nuance of it. What I do get immediately is this kind of wall of, um, how would I describe it? Musty, musky, cloudy cotton wool, I would say, on top of ambergris. So I would say it's ambergris wrapped up in some kind of aroma molecule of musks to create um, this kind of cloud-like effect of musky kind of quality. Ambergris does have an ethereal musty like quality to it, but this is more than more than that So yeah, you get this kind of cotton wool cloudy bubble of Kind of warmth I would say because it's why I say warmth is because it's wrapped up in just a hint of a sweetness Tonka bean isn't listed on the notes. However, I would say that the sweetness is in that direction so you get kind of this envelope of muskiness that is slightly sweet and might remind you of something a little bit like Tonka. The Oris Butter is not cosmetic. It will not smell like um, in your face over the top makeup or lipstick. It's not waxy. It's not lipstick like. So it's not an obvious kind of Oris in that regard of where people's brains usually go when they see Oris on the note list. This is soft. It's delicate. It's fine. One thing that it did remind me of as it dried down was maybe a little bit of talcum powder, which I think is different to makeup. <laughs> but talcum powder specifically it has a little bit of a talc vibe. It kind of reminded me of babies at one point because I was thinking, is this like nappies? What, what, what am I thinking here? Nappies, babies, and then I thought, oh, I, I, maybe talc. And then it kind of clicked. Yeah, I think it's kind of talc. So there is a baby-like quality to this fragrance that might remind a mother or a family of, of babies and talcum powder and nappies. It's got a little bit of that going on as it dries down in the first 20 minutes, half an hour. In that kind of early midsection, you're reminded of babies and talcum powder, but it's not overly powdery at the same token because of this envelope of muskiness that it has. This ambergris musk accord thing is gives it this envelope the whole way through the fragrance. It's coated in this thick ethereal band of musky kind of quality to it. For me, patchouli wasn't a major contributing factor in this perfume in terms of being able to perceive it or smell it. it it's not hippie kind of patchouli vibes. It's not earthy, it's not particularly green. So it's, if you're not into patchouli, I don't worry about it. It really doesn't come through in the perfume that strongly. What I get, like I say personally, is slight hint of a juiciness in the opening, going straight into this wall of musky kind of envelope, which is kind of cotton-like or cloud-like, kind of soft and thick. Sweetened a little bit with something that you might remind you a little bit in the Tonka direction and yeah, with a slight talky kind of vibe. It's not exactly talc, it is a little bit unique, but that's the closest thing that I'm reminded of when I say, um, you know, think of babies and talc. It's not exactly that, but it's like going in that direction. As it dries down, it doesn't really change except it gets softer, and I would say even the ambergris isn't, how do I say it? I think it's definitely, or it feels to me like the ambergris is woven into these other musky kind of molecule things going on. And they're very light. They're not obvious in a way. They're not, it's not white musk. It doesn't smell like 
freshly laundered clothes from the washing machine. It doesn't smell like lotion or cream or soap. It's, it's a very neutral musk, but it seems to be paired with the ambergris. It doesn't feel like it's just ambergris. It definitely feels like it's, it's there's a muskiness to it without smelling, like I say, like those obvious musks. It's a very neutral musk but it gives this kind of, like I say, band of ethereal, musty kind of quality to it. That's very natural, very skin-like. It smells like kind of warm skin in a way. Like almost it could be like someone's natural skin chemistry if they just smelled good naturally. <laughs> it's kind of a good smelling skin smell. For me, in terms of performance, it felt to me personally like it was maybe a little bit closer to the skin, like an intimate bubble. I think if you're moving around outside and you're getting kind of wafts of air um, flowing around you, then you might kind of, it might go off a little bit more. For me, as a daily wear in the house kind of thing, I didn't notice it very much. It felt quite close. I would say after five to six hours on my skin, it was kind of gone-ish. You can smell it a little bit longer, but I would say for most people, you would call it a day around about six hours. Obviously, skin chemistry dependent, some people will get shorter and some people will get a little lot longer. It just really depends on skin chemistry. You know, you have to try perfumes yourself but <laughs> that way. Um, but for me on my skin, six hours, uh, like I say, intimate kind of projection and sillage, that's how it kind of came across anyway. It's, it's a light perfume, it's not heavy, it's not kind of a beast mode type <laughs> wall of thing. It's subtle, it's it's natural smelling, I would say. Very natural, very subtle, mellow, soft, delicate. Um, and like I say, almost like your natural, almost like your natural scent in a way. I think it could be someone's signature scent, I would say, for most occasions, most times of the year. I think it just smells very nice. It doesn't wow me. I don't get like excited by it, but it smells very nice. If I got it, if I gave someone a hug, for example, and they smelled like that, I would think, wow, they smell really good. Um, but that's it. Like it smells nice, but I don't, I don't kind of, yeah, that's the best way I can describe that. No obvious major changes with this relatively linear. It just gets softer and kind of gets more, I guess, into the musky kind of parts of it. And yeah, uh, I would say completely unisex, completely gender neutral. Spring, autumn would be good. Um, winter might struggle a little bit if it's very cold, but in general, it'd be fine for the winter. If you wore it maybe a little bit less, you know, less sprays, it could possibly pull off in the summer in the hot weather. Might not be your preference in the hot weather. Spray a little bit lighter if you do, I would suggest. In general, I would say it comes off a little bit more casual. It's not something you would probably wear on a date. Possibly maybe not even something you would wear to work. However, you could wear it to work, just because I'm saying possibly you might not wear it to work. You could wear it to work. I don't think you would offend anyone. It's not heavy enough to annoy anyone if you're working in a kind of office environment. So depending on what your work is, then you know this could be fine. If you're a teacher in a school or a university, there'd be no, no real problem with this. So it could be a daily wear for someone um, and yeah, it comes across, like I say, a little bit more casual. I feel like it would work in most situations in the sense that you could wear it dressed up and no one would ever complain, you know? <laughs> but as a reviewer that has to describe things to you, it comes off a little bit more casual. It would work dressed up. It would work to most occasions. You're not really gonna, ever gonna offend anyone. Altogether, I think the words to highlight for this one is pleasant, nice, warm, comforting, cuddly, uh, cloudy, um, and that's kind of the vibes that I get. Very nice, don't love it. I probably wouldn't um, buy a bottle myself, but if you want something that's very easy to wear as something that you could potentially have as a signature scent that is light, say you, you don't really want a heavy perfume, 
you want some delicate, soft kind of waft of something very pleasant and something like almost an enhancement of your own skin, then this would be a good option to have a think or to get a sample of and try it out yourself. If you tried it, leave a comment below, let other people know kind of how it works on you. Uh, I think that's always helpful because these are like, I, I consider the reviews that we do on YouTube like little databases, like if someone's ever interested in this fragrance and they're wondering about should I buy it and they want to learn a little bit about it or you know they're interested in the brand but they haven't smelled them any of them yet this is like a little library of kind of what to expect for people and if they can read in the comments other people that have tried it you get a broader um, idea I guess a little bit how Fragrantica works but I don't use Fragrantica I'm not a big fan um, YouTube is my preferred platform <laughs> leave a comment give a thumbs up it helps the algorithm and I will see you on Monday with some more videos. I am planning on some tutorials, but I need to um, plan them out a little bit as to how I'm gonna do them, um, because I'd like them to be done well. So I'll see you soon. We've got lots to look forward to. Uh, some first impressions to do as well. I've got lots of, I've got lots of samples um, coming in and samples I already have. So yeah, talk soon. Take care, have a good weekend. Bye. One time he disappeared for oh, two or three days. When he came back, they, they asked him where he'd been, and he said, oh, just sailing.